Hey, it's Eddie and welcome to another edition of Stuff and Things. I'm back here at the Dome Shaped Underground House. They have finished doing the shot crate and we've actually started pulling down some of the styrofoam. Uh, I don't have a complete video of all the shot crate because before the last day of shot creating was being done, I had to go to the hospital and spend six days on antibiotic IVs because apparently I have diverticulitis. So, a couple things happened. They shot the last day when I wasn't here. I had a couple guys watching, and things didn't go exactly the way I had hoped. Uh, so I'm gonna go over a couple of problems that we had here so that you can avoid these. First and foremost, this whole thing should have been done in two days. Well, the guys were supposed to come the day before to set up all the scaffolding, and they didn't. And actually, it was a couple days before. They didn't show up. Um, it kept getting pushed and they said, oh, we'll set it up in the morning. And at that point, I should have trusted my instinct and pulled the plug and canceled the trucks and had them come in and just set up. Because what ended up happening was they shot the first eight feet just fine because they could reach it. Then they were scrambling to set up scaffolding. As a result, we had to send back one and a half truckloads of concrete because it sat for too long, which the contractor is paying for. But still, it's a waste. Um, and... What turned out, what could have been a two-day job, ended up being a three-day job, which didn't affect me money-wise, but it affected him, and it's not the way to do things. Um, the other thing that happened was they didn't exactly plan how they were going to do the top, and I should have been more forceful and explained to the guy, look, this is what you have to do. He told me he had it. It was clear he doesn't or didn't, and the issue was that they needed to put some sort of platform or form to work off of. When we did the last house, they used a combination of what's known as pool jacks as well as slope jacks. The slope jacks hook into the rebar of the dome and stick out, and it's very simple. They can just they just hook it in, throw boards up, work off of it, and once they work their way to the top, they then pull the boards down. Well, these guys shot the first floor, shot the first layer, shot the second layer, then pulled all the scaffold and boards down, plugged all the holes, not realizing that they needed that to work on the next layer. So when they got up near the top, it was very difficult to fill all those holes and take things down. In essence, they made a lot more work for themselves. The way you want to do this is you want to set everything up beforehand, all the scaffolding, all the jacks, anything that you're going to work off of. The problem with shooting off a boom lift is multiple. First off, the finishers are, need something to work off of. So you'd really need two lifts because one guy's going to be shooting off of one lift and the other guys are going to be basically finishing off of the other. Um, the maneuverability around the dome oftentimes is a little bit tight. It's a tight area to work with because usually you're digging into a hillside. So you don't have a ton of room between the dome and where you've excavated. And you don't want to excavate a huge area because that's more of an area that you've got to backfill and possibly compact. So the proper and easiest thing to do, pool jacks, slope jacks. Um, the other thing that happened was the guys were rushing and because they weren't paying attention, they only threw one 2x4 up, threw a couple of boards on it, and then three guys climbed up on it, and the 2x4 snapped. Fortunately, nobody got hurt, but they fell about 15 feet, slid down the side of the dome. Everybody was okay. They were bumped and bruised. But again, and I can't stress this enough, if your contractor doesn't have all of his platforms and everything set up, pull the plug, tell him, no, we're not shooting until all that stuff's done. Don't try to do it on the day. Um, the other thing is, you want to leave everything set up until you finish the dome. Then you want to work your way back down, taking down what you put on the dome to work off of and filling the holes as you go. Okay, moving on. So you see behind me the wall, we've pulled the styrofoam off and this is the, what the exposed wall is. What we're going to do here after we snipped all the wires off, so now the wall is relatively smooth as it could be. What happens next is that when I do the drywall, the drywall guys are going to literally plaster right over that wall. So it'll literally be concrete with a layer of plaster on it. It's what we did in the last dome. It looked really good. I was very happy with it. Um, one thing that we discovered when we plastered the other one was the plaster started cracking and it had this really weird kind of look to it. And we discovered that when we put glue on it first, for some reason, it prevented the plaster from cracking. Um, I didn't know this. This was something that my... Uh, my drywall and plaster guys, it was a trick they knew about putting plaster over concrete. He did basically one section of wall to see if it would crack or not. It cracked really badly. So then they scraped that all off and he went back and smeared, I think it was like Elmer's glue or some Elmer's carpenter glue, some sort of glue 
was smeared on it and then they put the plaster on and the plaster stuck great and looked great and didn't dry out and crack. So, so after we uh, shot created, it appeared from the outside that everything was okay. But when we pulled the styrofoam off the inside, we discovered certain areas had very loose, sort of granular and sandy concrete. Um, you might be able to tell here, you see this area right here, there's sort of a band around the middle here uh, that's a little bit darker. So here's what happened. When you're shotcreting, the shotcrete nozzle has to be perpendicular to the surface because it's blasting the concrete into the surface and the force of that is what makes it stick. Well, what happens is as the dome curves, the guy running the nozzle needs to move the nozzle with the curve. In our case, he apparently didn't. Um, the dome was curved, the nozzle was straight, so the concrete was hitting and re deflecting off and landing up in, up in the next section above it and all that loose stuff then hardened and then was covered with concrete. Now it turns out we only had about an inch maybe of this. We didn't have, uh, it didn't affect the structure any. There was a couple spots where there was a little bit of rebar exposed, but it was no big deal. This has happened before. I immediately called Formworks and spoke with the engineers. It wasn't anything to worry about structurally. Um, but it was ugly and it did need to be fixed and it did need to be fixed properly and there was a lot of it. So I called my shotcrete guy. Fortunately, he did the right thing. He came in, he looked at it and said, no, we, we need to fix this. So what they did was they came back in, they scraped all the loose stuff off, and then they reshot it from the inside. Um, you'll see areas where it's a little bit rough. And I left it rough on the inside simply because the whole inside of the dome is gonna get plastered. So there was no point in making this smooth. In fact, if it's rough, the plaster will stick to it better. So we decided to leave it, leave it uh, rough. On the outside of the dome, you definitely want it smooth. Um, but on the inside, you don't. Part of the reason this happened was the day that they did the final shoot, I wasn't here. I ended up in the hospital. I had a case of diverticulitis. I ended up spending six days in the hospital. Um, thought the guys had everything. We went over how it needed to be done. And you know, mistakes happen. It's just one of those things to their credit. They came in, they fixed it. It all looks good now, so we're okay. But um, to recap, the things that you want to do when it comes to shot creating. First, you want to make sure all of your platforms that you're staging off of and working off of are set up before you start shot creating. Uh, second, the platforms need to be set at a height of about six to seven feet at each level. And the reason for that is very simple. The guys standing on the platform have to be able to reach the next platform because they want, you want to have them be able to reach every portion of the dome to make it smooth. In our particular case, there were a few spots where they had spaced them too far apart, and the end result was they couldn't quite reach the area, so I had a few areas that were a little bit rougher than I would have liked. Nothing that would have adversely affected the structure, but obviously the smoother and more even that the structure is, the easier everything else becomes. So you wanna make sure your platforms are up, and to, up beforehand, you wanna make sure that they're situated so that each platform can be reached by the next platform. The guys need to keep the gun perpendicular to the dome at all times, and obviously they need to finish it. The way to do it is they work their way to the top. You don't take anything down until they've shot the entire structure, then start pulling your platforms down. So you'll pull the top platform down while working on the one below it. You plug the holes, smooth out those holes, move down to the next platform and pull the one above it, and so on until you get back down to ground level. <laughs>